The city of Norfolk celebrates the creation of new families during its seventh annual adoption day. Broadway comes to Chrysler Hall with select performances for the deaf and hearing impaired and a reminder about a special project for children and youth in foster care. The forum begins right now. I'm Jan Callahan. On November 7th, 30 children and their new families were honored during a special ceremony at Norfolk Circuit Court. The Triple N's John Linka captured the smiles at the seventh annual Adoption Day celebration. A packed Norfolk Circuit courtroom, but not for a trial. This time, it was for a celebration. Today is the celebration of being chosen. It was the seventh annual Norfolk Adoption Celebration in conjunction with National Adoption Day. Not because of chance, but because your parents yearned to find you. With hopeful hearts, they searched for you. And with great joy, they found you. And when they had finally found you, they chose you over all others. This year's chosen ones included these 30 happy foster children who got to come to the front of the courtroom, get a certificate, get their picture taken, and most importantly, officially get their new forever families. From Augustus Caesar, the first emperor of Rome, to John Lennon of the Beatles, adopted kids have grown up to have a huge impact upon all of our lives. So who knows, maybe in this room today, there's a future NBA star like NBA star Alonzo Mourning, or a future political leader like adopted kid Jesse Jackson, or a future business leader like adopted kid Dave Thomas, the man who founded Wendy's, or maybe a genius leader like Steve Jobs, who founded Apple. Maybe there's a future president or someone who finds a cure for cancer or becomes the first person to set foot on Mars. Time will tell, but one thing we know for sure, whatever you kids do, a lot of the credit will belong to the wonderful people in this room who are your parents. There's a lifetime reward in adoption with its joys and challenges and expanding families in a way that some people just can't understand. But because of their love and compassion for these children, they are special and they make this day special. Javion Scott Porter and Mr. and Mrs. Porter. I have two beautiful um, kids that we have adopted and we were called for another placement and it was for a two year old. So we were excited about that and we just love changing lives. And so that's why we decided as a family to do this process again. That process brought them Javion, happy to join the ever-growing Porter family. I have sisters and brothers. Yep. And I have daddies and, and my mom. And I have Dragan and Deanna. Jerry and Darius. Not a bad start to the holiday season. To have a time of peace within the home, it means a lot because a lot of children don't have that and they don't have to lock the doors or feel like someone is going to harm them. That's not happening in our home. Approximately 1,150 children are currently available for adoptive placement in Virginia. 110 of those children live in Norfolk. If you have ever considered adopting a child, contact the Norfolk Department of Human Services at 664 7722 or visit norfolk.gov forward slash human services. Well, we'll be back in just a moment with a demonstration of how Chrysler Hall is bringing Broadway to life for the deaf and hearing impaired.
Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Ago, the Norfolk Commission for Persons with Disabilities helped a hearing repaired citizen obtain a grant to fund open captioning at Chrysler Hall during its Broadway series. Although the grant didn't come through this time around, the city of Norfolk has agreed to provide the service anyway. So what is open captioning and why is it important? Meet Mari Hodges with seven venues. She's the marketing director. Don Doherty, who's with the Hearing Loss Association of Virginia Beach, a regional organization. And Lois Boyle, a Boyle Reporting and Captioning Services, which I think explains what she does. And we have three, all three of them here to provide perspectives on different aspects of open captioning and what uh, people in the, the deaf and hearing impaired community want and desire and how they are being accommodated. Um, open captioning, Lois, is not a new thing necessarily, but it is something that is not really um, used everywhere uh, when it comes to entertainment. No. Um, well, this has been a phenomenon that's taken off in the um, performing arts venues. It's been around for a little while, but it's new to the Hampton Roads area. As a matter of fact, Chrysler Hall is the first venue to provide open captioning. And it's a speech to text display um, that is shown on an LED board okay. where the deaf and the hard of hearing can read what is being said by the performers on stage or being sung by the performers on stage. This is live? Yes, live, in sync with the, um, the cast on stage. And okay. it's great. So the deaf and hard of hearing um, have access to performing art shows. Okay. So as we are talking, um, you could be typing in what we are saying? Actually, the, the, scra the, the plays are scripted. So I get the scripted play. I upload it into my software and I edit it. I take out all the narratives. Um, for instance, scene one, you will get a setting. Um, since I have Jersey Boys as an example, okay. maybe the first scene is set in New Jersey, um, on the streets of New Jersey with Frankie Valley singing. Well, you and I as a hearing uh, patron wouldn't see that or hear that. Well, so I take that out. Um, so the deaf and hard of um, hearing uh, patrons can get the same experience, the exact same experience that you and I would get at the show. And I edit all of those narratives out. I leave in the, the speaking and the singing, and I input characters um, such as um, a singing character, a musical um, note, so they can know that um, what is being um, happening on stage is someone is singing. OK. OK. Great. Wow. That's very detailed work. Yes. But it, effective, apparently. Don, you're with the, uh, the Hearing Association of Virginia Beach, which it's is It's actually the Hearing Loss Association, Association of America, ah. and we have the Virginia Beach chapter. Okay. It's a national organization, you know, dedicated to helping people to communicate better through programs of advocacy, education, support, and, and the like. Yeah. So we've been very active and very supportive of everything Lois and Marie have been doing, along with uh, the Norfolk uh, 
Commission for Disabilities. Yes. It, it's, it's a marvelous experience. I know the first time that I had the experience to see captioning, it wasn't as part of the captioning that Lois is providing. I remember in the Philadelphia area, I went to see a Broadway play called Children of a Lesser God. When was this? This was about 1980 or 81. Mm -hmm. And Mary Matlin played in that, and of course she is deaf, and she used American Sign Language during the performance. And because the audience couldn't understand ASL, they provided captioning at that show. I loved it. It was one of the first Broadway shows that I went to that I could understand what was happening. Um, since that time, over the next 25 years, it was never available until the Theater Development Fund and Chrysler Hall and, and our organizations here in the local Hampton Roads community really wanted this accommodation because hearing loss is a condition of social isolation. It's not like being blind where you can't do things. When you have a hearing loss, you can't interact socially with other people. And so we're limited. We can't go to the movies. We can't go to a show. We can't communicate when the lights are out. And so what we do, we provide, we use caption on televisions or you wait until the DVD comes out so that you can see a show. Uh, but this is the first time in Hampton Roads that this type of understanding has been made available and it's funny because not only individuals who have hearing loss benefit as I've gone to these shows I look to my left and my right and some of our senior citizens who often miss some of the conversation on a play they look immediately to the caption board and they're following it like everyone else okay. so it's just a marvelous tool that helps people to understand the beauty and the passion of Broadway performances. Well, I think too that, you know, pointing out that there are other people who use it who may not even consider themselves as hearing impaired is important, but there are also, it also points out the fact that there are probably more hearing impaired individuals than people realize right. um, in, in our country. And uh, you have some, some statistics right now, that are pretty startling. 48 million people nationwide based on the latest, latest statistics out of the National Institute of Health. And that's gone up from about 38 million only 10 years ago. Mm. Uh, right now, of people 65 or older, one out of three have hearing loss. And so, two primary causes for hearing loss. Number one is noise and exposure to noise. And that's how I lost my hearing. I was in Vietnam and the various sounds of combat and, and whatnot uh, damaged my hearing. Since that time, uh, and I've been wearing at least one hearing aid since 1970, since that time, the other factor that affects hearing loss is just growing older. You know, so the aging process affects the ear as well as the amount of noise that you're exposed to and the intensity of that noise and the duration of that noise can cause instant damage. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful and conserve the hearing that we have left. That's right, and we have a lot of young people that are um, using their hearing uh, for a lot of um, things that may create damage down the road. We've talked about earbuds. Um, One thing I would yeah. recommend all parents do is to be aware that if you can hear the noise outside your child's earbuds, they're causing damage, yeah. you know, it's too loud. And children love this great noise, they love to have automobiles with a lot of noise, but they don't realize the harm that they're causing today mm -hmm. is going to have consequences later on as they're adults. That's right, the rock concerts we attended in our youth are creeping up on the folks that are now entering their golden years. Um, and there are more people that are growing older and living longer too, so that just seems to be uh, uh, point to the fact that we're probably be seeing a lot more people that are dealing with this deficit. So an open captioning option, there is there is sign, there is the open captioning, we have closed captioning for some um, televised things, but this um, really opens the door to a lot of people. Marie, uh, with seven venues providing this kind of an option for the hearing impaired, has it uh, what do you see? It's been uh, happening for a couple of years now. Do you, do you see an interest, a growing interest in this? Absolutely. And I think, and I'm sure Lois and Don can attest to this, there's a big learning curve that has to take place, especially for people 
who have good hearing or great hearing and are kind of like, what's that? Or, you know, why is this necessary? Mm -hmm. So we saw that learning curve take place, you know, with clients, with staff, with patrons. And just like Don said, we get feedback from uh, patrons who attend shows that aren't necessarily, weren't necessarily aware how beneficial this was to them and they're not necessarily using hearing aids or anything. So besides the hearing loss community that actively um, buys tickets to these open caption shows, there's a ton of other people who benefit um, mm -hmm. who have suffered hearing loss. So yeah, we have a steady group of patrons who um, come in and utilize Lois's services and it's great. And we've dabbled with, um, well, we've always provided sign language, American Sign Language, but I learned too, I took for granted that if you suffered from a hearing loss or dealt with a hearing loss that you would automatically know sign language and that's not the case necessarily you know not everybody knows it mm -hmm. so this is a great service and it's much more technologically advanced you know to offer that kind of um, uh, service to patrons. Right well the technology has improved too I mean since you said you had seen this many years ago but things now are much easier um, to do than they were that long ago and, um, and and it can only get better. You've got performances uh, for the Broadway series. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that for a second because Chrysler Hall is bringing this and it is starting um, this coming weekend and continuing through the winter months. So this year you have done things a little differently um, in that you're providing performances for each of the Yes, Shows. but typically Jam Theatricals is our Broadway partner, so they work in conjunction with um, Lois to provide these services. So basically, in the past, uh, shows were uh, specifically chosen and they would send the script to Lois. But this year, where all the shows in the Broadway series, all five shows, will offer open captioning during the Saturday matinee. Okay. So the 2 p.m. matinee of every Broadway show that we have coming this year. And like you said, there's one every month, December, January. March and um, and we have one obviously this weekend right. so people can plan around that you know buy their tickets in advance and it's something instead of you know having to request it or it's hit or miss or you don't know if the service is going to be there we're so proud and to work with Lois and Don and say hey we can boast that we have this and and you know and then we have those repeat customers because I remember um, working with you on a show once before and you said something that stayed with me about how the biggest problem with hearing loss is isolation and sure. how you know you take that for granted and like Don said to see the people who've never experienced that the you know mm -hmm. the letters you get or the expressions on their face that makes it so worthwhile so because yeah. you don't know that until you have experienced. I had one of my members who attended a performance and she was brought to tears oh. she was a piano musician and she saw one of the caption Broadway shows and she was so overwhelmed by being again able to experience something that she was so passionate about and this, this whole idea of open captioning the learning curve that Marie and Lois talk about is people don't know it's there they don't know it's available they don't understand how much greater the enjoyment of the show would be it helps people to get out of their homes it helps people to enjoy a current Broadway show instead of having to wait until a DVD yeah. or something comes out where they can see captioning. So I believe that anything that helps a person to communicate better and to enjoy life better, right. that's progress. Wow. And open captioning does that for people that have hearing impairment. And you can sit right next to somebody who doesn't necessarily need that um, that sort of uh, support and enjoy it right alongside with them without mm -hmm. it being there's no difference. Right. If I can, if I can say, that's how I came to realize that the service wasn't provided because the member he is talking about, her name is Angela Hill, and like he said, she has a de she um, has a degree in music and she lost her hearing profoundly at 30 and does not sign language. And she told me in working with her, she told me that she would drive by the Chrysler Hall marquee and see all these great performances and could not go in. Mm -hmm and could not attend because there was no um, accommodation for her. And I said, well, sure you can. I can um, provide that for you. And I said, just call Chrysler and tell them that you want open captioning. And she did. She advoc advocated for it. Mm -hmm. And she got Shirley Confino Reader with the Norfolk uh, Mayor's Commission on Persons with Disability to work with her, and Chrysler graciously agreed to provide it. And I sat there with her for the Lion King oh. with, 
with my computer, my laptop, and my machine. I did not have the LED board at the time, and sh like Don said, she was brought to tears at the end. She had not entered into a theater in over 20 years. Wow. And her husband had never entered the theater, and he went on, he, um, he went on a date night with her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so he so enjoyed nice. the show, and um, it has blossomed ever since. Oh, that's wonderful. So. See, hearing loss is an invisible disability. You can be sitting right next to a person, and they will sometimes fake that they understand it. We call it, with hearing loss, bluffing. Yeah. And when people laugh, they laugh. When something is laughing with a TV or a movie, they exhibit the same behaviors. Because in many cases, folks don't want to call attention to their self and their disability and their social group doesn't even realize they have a disability. And so in all of these different activities, like parties, like going to a noisy restaurant, doing a, uh, a health fair or a what's the one, Harbor Fest, mm -hmm. you know, we go in that kind of an environment and we're lost. We've just got to like wander around and try to understand bits and pieces. Uh, the best way to communicate with someone with a hearing loss is in a quiet setting you know, one-on-one, -on -one, two on one with good lighting, a round table so you can see everyone's lips, and that way we're very effective. Mm -hmm. But we get in other social situations and it's very, very difficult, uh, not only for people that have noise damage, but also for our senior citizens. Mm -hmm. You know, as folks get older, it's harder and harder to understand. And because the public doesn't understand the unique problems of hearing loss, they might get frustrated with us mm -hmm. because we ask them to repeat. Mm -hmm. I remember going to a, a local restaurant and I asked, you know, pay my bill, and the person was looking down away from me and said something and I couldn't understand. And I said, could you please repeat that? I couldn't understand you. And they got angry at me because I couldn't understand them. And that's a typical response that the public may get because they don't understand that you're trying very hard to understand, but sometimes you can't because the frequencies or the cues, like looking at me, let me see your lips, uh, all these tools that we use to communicate aren't available. Well, I think that's that really points to the need to educate the public more, and, uh, and this is one way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's a very painless, in a very entertaining way to do it, too. So the Broadway series at Chrysler Hall mm -hmm. going through April. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And every Saturday, we'll, or every show, we'll have a Saturday matinee Correct. at 2 p.m. with open captioning provided by... No. Miss Lois Doyle you'd like and her company. I so, can. well, we have unfortunately run out of oh, time, okay. so we're going to have to uh, move forward. But I think people get an idea of how just, it works, and I'm yeah. really, really glad that you were bring, able to bring this on. Thank you for sharing your story and your perspective, Don and Mari. Of course, City of Norfolk couldn't have it without you. Thank you. Oh, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. We'll be back in a moment with a reminder about how you can help bring some holiday cheer to children and youth in foster care. Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you! Come look at Mr. Feather! Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark! We're just playing! We're just playing! I'm trying to get you out of here! Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. 
Nearly 300 children are currently in Norfolk's foster care system. It's a difficult adjustment for children and youth at any time of year, but particularly so during the holidays. The Department of Human Services holds an annual campaign to boost everyone's spirits. The Holiday Project for Foster Children invites area businesses, organizations, and individuals to show their support in a number of ways. You can make a financial contribution by sending a check or purchasing gift cards. Or you may choose to get involved in a more personal way by sponsoring a specific child or children. All donations will be used to support the Foster Care Holiday Project and may be tax deductible to the extent permitted by law. Checks may be mailed uh, to and purchased gifts dropped off at the Department of Human Services at 741 Monticello Avenue, Norfolk, Virginia, 23510. Attention, Gary Cofield, Holiday Foster Care Project. Contribution forms can be found online at norfolk.gov forward slash human services. You can call 664-7786 and ask for Lynn Parker and she will um, answer your questions and send you a form if you need one. So we hope that you will consider that as the holiday season draws near and we thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you again next time.